Loud noises can be deafening. That's right. I'm talking permanent hearing loss. Plus, there are other hidden costs you may not know about. How can noise hurt you? Let's start at the beginning with a look inside the ear. When you hear a noise, sound waves come in your outer ear and hit your eardrum. Your eardrum bounces against some tiny bones in the middle ear. These bones then vibrate the cochlea, or inner ear. And inside the amazing inner ear, nerve cells send messages about these sound vibrations to your brain. If you work unprotected in a place where there's constant noise, you may have already suffered some hearing loss. Once your hearing's been damaged, there's not much you can do. Hearing aids may help you function better, but they can't really correct the loss. Hearing loss due to noise exposure is permanent. You see, excessive noise damages some of the hair cells inside the cochlea. How do they get damaged? Well, think of these hair cells as blades of grass. Each time grass is stepped on, it bounces back. But after repeated stepping, the grass is stressed and damaged, and it stops bouncing back. This is what happens to the hair cells in the ear. Repeated exposure to loud noises breaks down the hair cells. If this happens to you, voices may sound distorted and hard to understand, and you may have a hard time hearing high pitches. If your hearing was damaged, my voice might have just sounded like... If this happens to you, voices may sound distorted and hard to understand. Loud noise doesn't just affect your hearing. It can affect other parts of your body as well, without you even realizing it. For instance, if you work unprotected around loud noises, you may tense up or tighten the muscles in your neck and shoulders. Sudden, unexpected sounds may startle or distract you, creating a safety hazard. Your blood pressure may go up, and your productivity may go down. And you may be less able to hear warnings, such as audible alarms. Don't let these hidden side effects of noise catch you off guard. There are many ways you can be protected from all the effects of noise. The best way to reduce exposure to noise is by controlling it at its source. Engineering controls and regular maintenance can help stop noise where it starts. Proper use of personal hearing protection will also reduce your exposure to noise. Putting it on correctly every day is the single biggest step you can take to protect yourself from hearing loss. There are several types available earplugs, canal caps, and earmuffs. But remember, they don't all provide the same level of protection. Even similar-looking earplugs can have different noise reduction ratings. Most personal hearing protection is labeled to tell you how much protection it provides. This label is the noise reduction rating, or NRR. The higher the NRR, the more protection. You should decide with the help of someone who's trained in fitting hearing protectors which size and type protector is best for your working environment. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions for proper insertion and use of earplugs. The best ear protection is protection that you use every day. Properly fitting ear protectors can be worn for long periods of time. If they're well designed, if they're well fitted, and if they're kept clean, ear protectors provide good protection against most industrial noise exposure. One popular myth about hearing protection is that it makes it hard to communicate on the work floor. This just isn't true. Hearing protection filters out much of the high and low frequency noise that makes up the hums and clatters of machinery and leaves in the middle frequencies found in our speech. So I have the checklist while there's a lot you can do personally to protect yourself from noise, you're not in this fight alone. Your employer must follow state and federal guidelines to ensure your safety as well. For instance, to make sure workers are protected from unhealthy exposure to noise, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, has a noise standard. This standard defines where workers must wear ear protection. And OSHA requires hearing conservation programs for all employees whose noise exposure averages 85 decibels or more over an eight-hour work shift. This is commonly referred to as a time-weighted average. These programs are set up to help prevent hearing loss. They're also designed to catch hearing loss early, and once a loss has occurred, to prevent further hearing loss. 
the ocean noise standard only sets a minimum requirement for hearing conservation. Some workers suffer a hearing loss at noise levels below those set by the regulation. You may be one of them. Helen, why don't you come on out? Well, let me tell you, 0 to 20 is considered normal. So for the right ear, within normal limits. With the left ear and the lower pitches, we are within normal limits. But in the highs, we have to raise the volume a little bit. It's about a whisper level hearing loss or mild. Now, compared back to the past, the right ear is very stable. It's very good. It's showing that it's stayed the same. On the left side, we're seeing a little bit of a change for the worse. Mm -hmm. Now, where before your hearing was normal, now you have a little bit of a hearing loss. Mm -hmm. You need to use your hearing protection all the time in the noise so that this doesn't continue. It's a good idea to wear hearing protection even in areas that aren't as noisy as those referred to in the standard. And don't forget to take care of your hearing off the job, too. You may suffer more noise exposure in your personal time than at work. Remember, your hearing protection should be comfortable. If you're concerned about the level of noise in your workplace or are having problems with your personal protective equipment, talk to your supervisor now while you can still hear their answer.